welcome back to another exciting episode of the Kaleidoscope Maker. And in this episode, you're going to get to see how to make this kaleidoscope, which is unique because it has items inside, and it looks like this. And another shake. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Kaleidoscope Maker. I hope you've enjoyed my videos so far and I plan to continue to make more. Uh, but if you get an opportunity, please, please try to remember to press this uh, support button and see if you can give me a little bit of money to help me buy the materials to continue to make these. Uh, I'll probably still do it anyway, but your support and your help is greatly appreciated as this is kind of a costly endeavor. Uh, so. I'm going to show you how to make a, another stained glass kaleidoscope. You can also make this out of wood if you want to, if you get the uh, appropriate materials. And maybe in the future I'll show you how to make it out of wood itself. Uh, but again, continue to send in those uh, helpful suggestions and ideas on things you want to see and things you want me to cover. But please enjoy this uh, video. For the main part of the body of this kaleidoscope and this is again a unique kaleidoscope in that uh, the objects are actually inside the mirror system which you'll see and understand that I explain more uh, but <clears throat> I'm starting off with some two side pieces that are two and an eighth by seven inches long I have two of those and I'm going to make this out of this kind of iridescent blue I enjoy it just do something different. And then you'll need a, a clear or semi-clear uh, top piece. I'm using this textured uh, clear glass because I like it and it works pretty good. It has an interesting texture to it that I can use. You don't have to use it. Uh, you can use plain clear or some iridescent clear. But again, this one is one inch wide by seven inches long and I'm getting ready to cut my seven inches here and again there are many methods of cutting glass and many tools for cutting glass and in a future video I'll show you some of the other tools for cutting glass and cutting mirror um, and also show you some other ways of uh, bonding mirror but to give you an idea I'm just using my one of the simple tools I've had and I've got the other one that I made Whatever you have that you like that you want to use, I don't really care. I've even used just a ruler in the past. But in, in a future video, I'll show you more tools. But I'm trying to keep it simple to where I'm using tools you might have around the round. Uh, again, you might even have a different glass cutter. But anyhow, so now the next step is for me to grind these and to assemble them. And then I'm going to have to make an end piece for it. So. I'll be back. Now with the uh, three pieces, the two sides and the third side um, foiled and ground and foiled I should say, <coughs> is now time for me to go ahead and solder and I'm not going to show you that step because it gets to be boring uh, but you've seen in previous videos a technique, there's multiple soldering techniques but a technique of soldering so I'll solder this one up and be back. And now with the uh, body solder, I tried to do a little bit of decorative soldering. I didn't go too hard at it. Um, and now with the main body soldered, I need to put an end, not a clear end, but a, a, a backing for my mirror system. And so I'm going to do is try to cut a triangle that fits on here and solder on top. This I soldered on top instead of inside. I don't know if you can see it, I soldered it flat across the top, just trying to get the seams equal. <clears throat> and uh, then I need to add a little, I can add the stand later, but 
then it's cutting the mirrors, putting them in, and finishing off the other side. So I'm going to cut another triangle for here, solder it on, and it should be back. Now I've got the end soldered on. Um, now it's time for me to clean it out. And uh, by the way, I don't know if you can see it down there. I used the dichroic black just to make it interesting. But anyhow, um, clear on top. Cover up the end with a triangle and your two sides and solder it as decoratively or non-decoratively as you want to, just solder it. And then next step is for me to cut the mirrors for the inside and fill it actually with my objects and then close it off with the eyepiece and make a little stand for it. And I'm done. Now you don't have to make the stand, but I like to just because it makes it interesting. Uh, so I shall be back. Okay. The uh, next step I'm going to do on this, now since I've got the in soldered and the side soldered and cleaned up and I've cleaned the inside and let it dry, always remember to let it dry, uh, is to now cut the mirrors. And I hope you remember from one of my previous episodes, I show you how to make these and you can make them at various angles. You know, it's just not 30. You can do it at 60 and 90 and 45 and 27 and a half and all the other neat angles, 20, you know, whatever you want. Um, if you've got them done, you can use those things actually to measure what your mirrors are. And this is approximately 30. Uh, it might vary depending upon how you soldered it together, how well you separated the pieces and everything else. Uh, but this one says it's probably about one and three quarters inches to one and seven eighths varies. I'm probably going to try the one and three quarters, but I know you can also measure this one directly because it is in the angle you want. And since that side's a little bit larger than two, I don't want to overlap down at the end. I'd probably say one and three quarters or one and seven eighths. And again, again, depends upon your resolution on this and how how good of an angle you did on soldering this and how much extra you got. But it's approximately 30 degrees, and we'll kind of shoot for 30 degrees. Uh, so really, I'm going to just roughly say uh, one and three quarters. Um, so you have your first surface mirror, and I am going to show you how to cut first surface mirror again. Uh, this time I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm just going to measure and mark. And it's also best to check and see if your sides are square. And in this case, I'm going to say that's good enough because I'm really showing you the concept. Uh, if I was doing this for a production scope, I'd go into much more detail on it. Uh, but you say one and three quarters, one and three quarters, could have done one seven eighths, but I'll just come up here and mark. Sorry for the sound, that's my laundry. And I also want to make sure I know where I'm doing that at. I'm doing it right about in the center of that one. And again, by the way, if you happen to be working on something that's a little too... For example, you see that there's a gap in here when I cut. I don't know if you can see it. If you need to bring this up to where it's flush on the outside, you can take another piece of, of glass. And it's not going to hurt anything, especially if this glass is not thick enough. But you got to make sure it's up against the edge. And this is touching this nicely. That's what you want to make sure of. Okay, and glass cutter. All right, so now I'm going to... And again, you kind of heard that. There you go. I really should buy a razor blade, but right now I'm dealing with that. And again, I apologize. You just have to bear with this. Hopefully someday I'll be able to isolate that and get that taken care of. And then I'm going to measure off again one, one, and, one and three quarters inches.
Well, usually I wouldn't go to the bother of using this close. I'd flip it over to where I have the longest side available. And again, I'm going to be showing you more methods on how to cut mirror. Don't worry, there's many more tools and techniques on cutting mirror than you can kind of shake a stick at. And those are actually pretty good. So, here it goes again. Hold on. Now I need to have my inside dimension. And again, it depends upon if you're going to... Uh, Put the um, your eyepiece, and it's going to be a solid glass piece here of clear. If your eyepiece is going to be sitting, choose this as an example, sitting on the end of it like this and soldered in place, or if it's going to be sitting inside, flush inside, or anything thereof. If I do it kind of a little bit on the inside, I have to take in consideration this isn't exactly at zero. It got a little extra. But I'm saying seven inches would do it with the thing flush, which is basically the size that I cut the original glass at. Something about probably making my clear piece on the inside, which is hmm, a little bit over. 16th, about 330 seconds. So I can probably say roughly six and seven eighths. Which, you know, if you want to go into detail and go into that minutia of it, that's fine and dandy. I love doing that to myself sometimes, and sometimes I just don't want to. Yeah, that's part of the artistry of Kleisco making. So I will mark this at my six and and cut the end off so the mirrors fit inside of there. Now again, I'm probably trying to show you too much and too many items at the same time, but I tried to cut this one down a little bit by not showing you all the steps of, let's say, soldering and and all that other stuff, which I had in the past. Some people get bored with that. Some people like it. But again, I plan to be showing you more and more. I mean, there's a lot I can cover. And again, I there's more than one way to cut and deal with your uh, mirrors. Okay, so now I got the mirrors, and I'm just going to slide them in there right now while they're protected to see. Well, they fit kind of nice. See, I just kind of have them sitting in there. I don't know if you can see that very well. Hopefully, I can hold it where you can see it. See, they're just sitting in there. That's pretty good. I don't plan to put them in there way. I want to actually get the angle and all the other stuff. But this scope really isn't. It is necessary to get the correct angle, but. Then again, sometimes it isn't. <clears throat> okay, now I do know that this is an inch in here, and if I want to measure, I can measure that it is an inch. It's clearly an inch. Yeah, actually, it's a little under an inch. No, it's about an inch. Uh, and uh, one of my fellow kaleidoscope artists, who I've talked to a number of times on the internet, um, told me that he likes doing his mirrors a little bit differently. And I plan to do another episode covering just different ways of binding your mirrors than, than my favorite, what I call tape method. Which, by the way, I actually took it off the desk, so I'm not using it. And, you know, duct tape or whatever. Um, but I'm going to show you another neat way to do it. <clears throat> and I like his method. I mean, it, it's nothing wrong with it. And I've used it. I've used it a number of times. And, again, different people have different methods on how, they're, how they do that. I'm just going to take a couple pieces of wood and show a neat trick here on how to get right. Now I told you I wanted those mirrors about an inch apart, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line on here. Okay, 
I really should bring in view. And my solder, my, he uses a uh, hot glue gun. And this may not be the same glue gun that he uses. It's the one I had and had handy that I could find. Uh, there's more uh, ways to bind your mirrors together. But, you know, again, I'm going to draw a straight line right against my ruler. Then I'm going to mark off one inch on both ends. And I should learn to clean up my desk a little bit better, my work surface, which I try to keep clean. It's a good idea to do so. And I'm going to show you some other ideas on work surfaces and work areas. There's a lot that I can cover, and I plan to cover as much, if not all of it. I don't know if I'll live long enough to cover all of it, but anyhow, that's all right. And if you have any ideas on, on what you want to have covered, if there's particular uh, methods you use like foil or duct tape or regular duct tape or electrical tape or chewing gum as far as that goes, and I'm not exaggerating, chewing gum will actually work, or um, hot glue gun and hot glue or any of the others, which again I plan to show you some more, uh, whatever. But while we have a hot glue gun, I find a couple pieces of wood that have a clearly flat side, straight and flat. You do want straight and flat. And this is a neat trick that I like. I'll put a little bit of hot glue just to tack it. And if I work quickly, I'll mount this so it's flush against this side of the line. Push it down. The other way to do it is just put it there, which is what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to put it down on the line and tack it into place. Okay, and I'm going to let those things sit for a while. To where they hold it. You might even want to do this back side here. And um, that's at exactly the one inch that I need for my mirrors. Now, I'm going to show you other methods to do this. But this will help hold it at exactly, since I know that open side, I want to be one inch. And this time, I am going to clean off my mirrors. I'm going to use a soft, clean, you can use paper towel, or you can use a very clean ray. Again, like I said, paper towel. Try to find something that doesn't leave a lot of uh, or scratch it. Doesn't leave any residual materials or scratch it. Okay, and that looks really nice. And it's pretty well clean, doesn't have anything on there. And you can do the same thing with this one. Uh, right now I'm using Windex, but you can use whatever else, just even water. Well, water doesn't have a tendency to clean off the adhesives very well, but it does work. There's a thing, just make sure you don't use anything that'll take the mirror off, unless it's one of the things you want to do is take some mirror off. Uh, I typically don't, well, sometimes I say I don't and don't do this, but sometimes later you will. Now, again, Lothar, and the German's name in Germany is Lothar, or Luther. Not too sure exactly how he pronounces it. Doesn't matter. He's a real nice guy from what conversations I've had with him on the internet. And if he has a different method, I'm sure he'll get online and post comments. If you have a different method, that's fine too. Go online. Tell me what your methods are of binding the mirrors and maybe uncover them for other people. And what I'm going to do is just bring them together. And this really works nice because it uh, holds the mirrors right about the angle that I want. And then I'm just going to tack with super glue. I mean with hot glue. This may not be exactly his method. Again, he can 
Come on, tell me what he does or do. He may use a different gun. He may different use a different hot glue. Try not to get the strings if you get any strings on the inside. And try not to get glue on the inside. Then I'm going to... a little hot glue along the edge. And this is a very nice method too. Some people prefer the tape. Some people prefer this and it works out real nice. There are others, some other adhesives and my mirrors are basically in the position I want them to be. And these help hold them in place. So as you can see, it does a real nice job. There you are. And I didn't have any squeeze through or anything else. It's fine. Uh, again, you can now cover the outside with uh, foil if you want to block the light. You can also find some, I think you can find some of this hot glue that's actually colored or so it's not clear. Uh, again, doesn't matter a great deal. And uh, I want to make sure, oops, I forgot to mark which one's the inside and outside. Well, I knew what I was doing. This is the inside. These are the outside. Okay, and then I'm going to just go ahead and slide the mirrors on in. And there you go. See down there? You see the bottom. Try to bring it up. It's okay. Now, uh, in this case, I'm going to end up because I didn't make them short enough. Um, probably need to go an extra sixteenth of an inch. Cover that over, but I'll just put it flush. Um, that's this is one neat way, and I'm going to show you a mechanism that'll help you do this one in the future. But that's a neat way to make sure you hold it, and that really did a good job. It's almost perfect. Well. Yeah, pretty well. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Lo Lothar, Lothar, correct me please, however your name is pronounced, uh, from Germany. And he showed me using hot glue, and I'm sure this is not the hot glue, the hot glue gun he uses, but it does work and does a good job. And it's pretty fast, and it holds the mirrors nicely. So there you go. There's another way besides the tape. And I'm talking too much, I know. So now we're done with this, and we've got this. And my next step will be tell you that in this case because the objects are in the inside I'm going to put the objects inside before I solder on the eyepiece and let me explain this to you this is very delicate metal on glass and we don't want to scratch up the metal so I have to use a soft uh, material I'm going to unplug my uh, hot glue gun we want to use a soft mirror that's not going to do any scratching and again I'm sorry about the sounds but I'm in a basement, it's very, very wet right now because it's raining outside and it's trying to clean me out. I'm doing laundry and other stuff. And just have to live with my problems, I guess. Um, anyhow, what I'm going to do now, and again, I hope I find it. Did I put that? I put it up. <coughs> We're going to grab plastic beads. Or, yeah, plastic beads. And then this time, I kind of like to have most of them clear. Uh, you can again have some dark ones, maybe throw in a black one, or some that might have. I saw one here just a second ago. Did I get it? Well, there's one in here that has glitter in it, and that would look nice. Uh, typically, I wouldn't want to go too much, you know, like this one, which has a reflective back. Although that would, that still would work. Uh, and you want a variety of them, small, big, large. Uh, but I'm going right now just grab a batch of plastic ones. That's kind of a nice one. And I'm going to put those down in here. Okay. And I'll be the back after I put some in here. 
Okay, now you get to see the idea on how this thing works. Hopefully you can see down in there what that thing's like, and then what you do is you shake it, get a different image, and you can shake this while you're holding it. Okay, and then I'm going to show you a couple other ways to view this one. It's very nice. It doesn't make a three-dimensional effect. Okay, but there you are. You've got it. Now I'm going to since I've got what I like in here, and that looks really nice. Uh, my focus is getting mad. I got bifocals on. Um, I'm going to put the eyepiece on, and then I'll be right back, and I'll show you more about what it looks like. So we, I shall return. So now this is done, and uh, I'll give you a better idea of what it looks like. But sometimes you want to add a little extra, and I'll show you what I did before. Is I actually made a little stand. Show these bent pieces of wires in my previous versions that I made way back in, I don't know, dark ages, I guess. Uh, but I made these little stands for them to stand up real nice and neat. And typically, the way you view it is you look down that end and you can shake it, changes the image, and I'll show you what this looks like. Or you could tip it up. I don't know if you can see me, let me widen that. You can tip it up and look in, which is kind of cool. Tip it down, watch stuff fall down, and shake it. Watching stuff roll to you is pretty cool. If you have rounder pieces, they roll a little easier. But I'll show you what this thing looks like and um, show you some of what it does. And let me get it up here. And here's a shake. And another shake. And you can tip it upside down. Of course, not as much light gets into it, it sideways even. Okay, there's the part. Instead of shaking, you do this. Because I have a big piece of rolls in there. So that's what this looks like. All right. So one thing I, I, else I need to tell you, and again I want to thank Lothar or Lothar, however he pronounces his name, from Germany to that my fellow kaleidoscope artist creator uh, for recommending I show people how to do the uh, uh, hot gun, hot glue gun method. Uh, and again, any other methods you like, please give me a comment. Uh, email me whatever contact me somehow let me know uh, but another thing I want to tell people is is that when you're done making your kaleidoscopes and most of these kaleidoscopes by the way you can go ahead and reproduce I don't believe that anybody has patented this one and uh, if it's uh, a kit from somebody why don't you go ahead and buy their kit that's a nice way to help them out for putting all the pieces together and everything else uh, otherwise just go ahead if it's something I make and I don't tell you otherwise I usually sit there and say if it's patented, let you know if it's patented, which means you need to contact the person. Or if it's a kit, I usually let, like the Clarity kits, I let you know Clarity had those kits. Uh, this I don't believe was a kit. If it is, I apologize, but I used to make these quite a bit because I liked them. Um, <clears throat> and this also violates the rules of what I've said before about putting stuff inside the mirrors. Well, you see, you can break some rules to be, do something interesting. This goes inside the mirrors, and it is 
beautiful. And also make sure your stuff is clean, because if it's not clean, you can end up with some dust inside, but even then, it's not that bad. Um, <clears throat> but anyhow, um, another thing I want to tell you is that if you do make your own kaleidoscopes from anything I have here, I recommend that you, you sign them. And you can also date them, but, but sign them. This is the work that you've done. You put a lot of time and effort in it, and be proud of whatever you did, even if you think it's crappy sign it. Let people know that you did this. And it, it can become something very special to somebody. In this case I get one of those etching pens, mechanical etching pens that will let you etch into glass or metal. And I etch my name in here or my symbol. And uh, typically I'd also put in the, either the date or the year uh, that I did it. If it's something I think is a unique design and my own, uh, I'll sometimes say copyright. You know, especially if I've copyrighted it which is another process, not the same as patent, and you, you can do derivative work of copyrights. Uh, but anyhow, there you go. I've discussed a lot extra that I really um, kind of hadn't really planned on, but I still think you need to know. It, it is helpful. And these make beautiful kaleidoscopes, and again, you can put legs on it. So there you go, and please come back some more. I'm going to do something, some others besides stained glass, but it's a popular kaleidoscope material and make them out of wood, metal, as you see, plastic, whatever. Uh, found objects even work as well, which used to be one of my favorites and hopefully I'll cover some of those. Uh, but please come back. Please let me know how you like these. Please help support me. Uh, all this is great and wonderful by your wonderful thoughts and concerns and kindness to me for continuing to do this effort. Um, Thank you.